What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel where for today's video I have one hell of a news round for you guys because there have been some pretty big drops going down in the world of Transformers. So first of all, let's swoop into some of the third party news. DNA Design recently dropped official images for their upcoming DK53 Gear Master accessory set, which is pretty much an accessory pack for the studio series Rise of the Beasts, Wheeljack, Bumblebee and Mirage. So some of the accessories included are finally two much needed dual arm cannons for Wheeljack to annihilate those Decepticons with on the battlefield, these are a much needed upgrade. I mean, let's all face it, the accessory which did come included with Wheeljack not only was inaccurate, but was kind of puny. So these are definitely a more than welcome addition. When it comes around to Bumblebee, he will also include a battle mask attachment which can already slide over the top of the pre-existing face sculpt. So that is some pretty impressive integration. And when it comes to detail, looking pretty much spot on to the movie. I'm going to go ahead and say it, guys, but I've always been a bigger fan of B's battle mask design than I have for his regular face plate. So I'm definitely really excited to slap that bad boy on and much like Wheeljack he will also include an additional blaster so that he can finally pull off the dual arm cannon look which we see him kind of throwing down towards the end of the Rise of the Beast movie although when it comes to some of the accessories for Mirage he includes the most so much like Bumblebee yet again an additional arm cannon so that he too can pull off that dual arm cannon look as he is wiping the crap out of some of those Terracons he will also include some thigh fillers because let's all face it he definitely did have some pretty gappy thighs and then finally some kind of toe covers to make the foot design slightly more accurate to the actual CG design. Although I'm going to be honest, I think Mirage out of all of the Rise of the Beast Studio Series Autobots was by far the most compromised, mainly just due to the design and of course him having an officially licensed Porsche vehicle mode. So DNA design really needs to be bringing something bigger to the table when it does come to upgrades for Mirage because seriously, I would love to see kind of a full-blown leg upgrade for that guy. Those legs sadly were super kibbly and going by DNA design's past track record, I'm pretty certain they can make that figure way better than it finally is. So these definitely do look very promising. I'm hoping this retails no more than $20 to $25. You know, right now, DNA Design have definitely been charging a little too much for some of their upgrades, and considering that in total, you know, there's roughly eight components here, and they are all very tiny, I really don't think anything here should be retailing more than a deluxe class. Next up, Cowabunga! Hasbro finally dropped their official reveal for the Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle crossover. So, this has been by far one of my most anticipated reveals from their month of 40th anniversary live streams. And I'm going to go ahead and say it, guys. They have absolutely knocked it out of the park. So, the official title for this crossover is Party Wallop. Let's get stuck into some of the official images. First up, we have the classic, the iconic Party Wagon. And this thing looks straight up sick. So much better than I was expecting. Like, seriously, I was thinking maybe... They were just going to retool the Studio Series Wheeljack or maybe the most recent Code Red from the Stranger Things crossover, but they appear to have gone all out and have literally given us a brand new mold. Yeah, the details on this party wagon have literally been knocked straight out of the park. This thing is looking awesome. And then when it comes around to his robot mode, this is it fully transformed into the party wallop configuration. So in total, this guy has five different robot forms, which I think are crazy. And to be fair, this more generic one doesn't look bad. This is kind of a brand new turtle specifically designed for this crossover or Although the head sculpt does kind of look a little derpy, especially without that classic bandana. So what have Hasbro got and done? They have included four bandanas so that you guys can transform this bad boy into your favorite turtle, which I think is so freaking cool. When rumors began to circulate that we would be seeing a Ninja Turtle crossover, I was wondering what turtle they would choose. Because let's all face it, everybody has their favorite. Mine personally has always been kind of split between Donatello and Raphael. When it comes around to the accessories too, wow, is this packing a punch. So we get so many katanas, we get a staff, we get these daggers, we get some nunchucks, which I think are looking really freaking badass. It seems like the plastic chain won't be rigid either, so you will literally be able to fling that bad boy around like there is no tomorrow. You'll also be able to flip around the initial of the Ninja Turtle on the belt, which I thought was so freaking awesome. If you spin that bad boy around to the back, he's even packing the actual turtle shell, and the tiny little circular piece on the front end of the party wagon can also be removed and transformed into an actual pizza, so this really is just the perfect crossover. I mean, I don't even have this thing in hand, but already I can tell that this may be contender of one of the best Transformers for 2024. I think they have literally knocked it out of the park when it comes to this guy. Yeah, this is looking wicked and I cannot wait to get my hands on this. And sticking with the whole Transformers crossover, there are also two more planned for this year. So the first one would be a Transformers and Knight Rider crossover. Damn, I've been waiting for this one. Knight Rider was huge back in its day, so I cannot wait to see what Hasbro kind of pull off with this one. Of course, it will have to transform into the iconic kit. That is going to be such a sick vehicle to see fully realized into a transforming figure. And I'm hoping that much like we saw from the Dennis Nedry bot as part of the Jurassic Park crossover, the head sculpt of the robot mode will be very similar in design to David Hassel 
Hasselhoff's likeness. That would be the icing on the cake. And then the third crossover planned for this year, unfortunately, isn't a Jurassic Park one, but instead it is a Star Wars one. And Star Wars and Transformers are no strangers when it does come to crossing over, because I believe some of the earlier crossovers were strictly kind of Transformers and Star Wars exclusive. So it will be interesting to see what they base it on and how it will be an improvement engineering wise in comparison to some of the previous ones. Now let's get stuck into some 2025 mainline news. So JT Prime 17 is once again back at it and has compiled the waves that we can expect to see released next year for both the mainline, which is scheduled to take place after Transformers Legacy. Right now it is rumored to be titled as Prime as well as Transformers Studio Series. So the first wave of this Prime mainline is scheduled to at the moment release in April. So literally one year away from this day. And the first wave is going to include the Lux Class Animated Wasp, which I'm pretty much certain will be a repaint slash retool of that amazing animated Bumblebee, Deluxe Class Slingshot, Deluxe Class Air Raid. So already in the very first wave of this brand new mainline, Superion is definitely going to be making a presence. There will then be a Deluxe Class Solus Prime because this entire mainline at the moment is rumored to be centered around the 13 Primes. There will then be a Voyager Primer. Really excited to see how they pull off that design. A Voyager Class Armada Red Alert. You know, this one is going to be hype. All of the Armada figures so far to be released for Legacy, I think have been absolute bangers. Then when it comes around to Leader Class, this one I'm thinking will probably be a re paint. This is a leader G2 Grimlock. Now, considering we've already seen the yellow G2 Grimlock, I'm almost certain that this will be the blue repaint. Can't say that I'm too interested. You know, I haven't picked up any of the repaints of the Studio Series 86 Grimlock, but for those of you who want the King of the Dinobots fully decked out in a really crazy blue, then I'm pretty certain this will tickle your fancy. And then the final leader class for Wave 1 is easily the highlight out of the entire wave. We have the Fallen, which I am so excited to see how they pull off. When it comes around to Wave 2 for this main line, there will be a Deluxe Class Crash so expect this to be a straight up repack of the version that was supposed to come out in the Velocitron subline, although I believe was cancelled in some parts of the world. There will then be Deluxe Alchemist Prime, Deluxe Class Swindle. It's still unconfirmed whether or not this is a G1 Swindle or an animated Swindle. I guess only time will tell. If it's G1 based, then I think it pretty much confirms that we will also be seeing a Bruticus Combiner at one point. And then when it comes down to Voyagers, Robots in Disguise Skybite. Now I recently whacked out the Thrilling 30 Skybite, and I'm going to go ahead and say it guys. I thought it was a banger so i'm looking forward to seeing as to how they improve upon that with this brand new release there will then be a voyager class rescue bots heat wave i thought chase was really well done so i'm definitely looking forward to this guy and then finally for wave two a leader class onyx prime which i think has to be one of the more ambitious mainline figures that they appear to be approaching that design is straight up mental so i'm going to be really looking forward to seeing exactly how they manage to pull that one off at the moment i'm thinking maybe it's going to be a transmetals 2 megatron retool but i guess only time will tell and then when it comes to Wave 3, Deluxe Micronus, Deluxe Venom. So this will be a great companion piece to the upcoming Amazon exclusive 2-pack. There will then be a Deluxe Skydive, a Deluxe Fireflight, Voyager Class Alpha Trion. Really excited to see as to what design they base this Alpha Trion on. And then finally, a Voyager Class Flatline. And those pretty much wrap up all of the waves which we can expect to see for this brand new Prime Mainline in 2025. Now we jump into my bread and butter, the wave breakdowns for 2025 Studio Series figures. So in the first wave, which at the moment is scheduled to be released in January of 2025, there will be the long-awaited Deluxe Class Transformers Dark of the Moon Hatchet. So excited to finally see that one released. I mean, we already pretty much know what to expect in terms of the robot design because the CG render was leaked way back towards the end of 2022. So it's going to be awesome to finally see him actually make an official release. There will then be a Transformers Rise of the Beast Deluxe Class Double Punch. This is pretty Pretty much going to be a repaint of the Scorponok, which we recently saw released, either in a green or I believe a red colour deco. I guess only time will tell. There will then be a deluxe class Bumblebee movie, Bumblebee. Now, this one I'm wondering, what version of Bumblebee are they going to base this on? Is this going to be a new attempt at the Volkswagen design? Honestly, I really hope it is. Or will it be the Camaro that we do see towards the end of the Bumblebee movie? You know, they could pretty much just retool the Rise of the Beast Bumblebee for that. Then when it comes around to Voyagers, unfortunately nothing crazy here. So there will be a repack of the Rise of the Beast Voyager Optimus Prime, so for those who missed out on that original Buzz Worthy run, you will get a second chance, this time in the main line. There will then be a Voyager War for Cybertron Skywarp, so pretty much a Purple Gamer Edition Starscream. And then, when it comes around to Leader Class, right now, these are looking to be maybe repaints and retools, so the first one is 86 Galvatron. Now, will this be a brand new mold? Will this be a repaint of the Transformers Kingdom version? I'm thinking a repaint, although to be fair, at the very least, I would love to see them maybe tweak that original Kingdom Galvatron mold 
just to refine the details so that it does better match what we did finally see in the 86 movie. And then the final figure, which is probably the one that I'm the most excited for out of this wave, is a leader class Transformers Rise of the Beasts Ape Link, which we already know is going to be a retool of the leader class Optimus Primal. Although if they were going for dead on scale accuracy, I do think he should be a little bigger in comparison to Primal. And I'm really looking forward to seeing as to what they pull off when it comes to his robot mode, because Ape Link never transformed in the movie. When it comes to Wave 2, this is scheduled to be released in April of 2025, so literally again, one year away from this video. And for the Deluxes, there will be a Transformers 4 concept art Widowmaker. Really excited to see as to how they approach that design. She has such an intricate robot mode. I'm wondering how they're going to pull that off as a Deluxe class. I'm really hoping that they don't simplify the design, because I would love to see a proper take on that sick looking Fembot. Then there will be a Deluxe class Transformers Dark the Moon Q. I loved the original version, but it definitely needs an update, so can Cannot wait for that one. There will then be a package refresh of Deluxe Class 86 Movie Perceptor. When it comes around to Voyagers, a War for Cybertron Gamer Edition Ironhide, which I imagine will be a repaint slash retool of Ratchet, which we are expected to see towards the end of this year. Then there will be a Voyager Class Transformers 1 Sentinel Prime. So based on the animated movie, which also is scheduled to be released later this year. Pretty awesome to see that film also receiving the studio series treatment. And then when it comes to leaders, these are packing a punch. So the first leader will be a Transformers Age of Extinction. Optimus Prime. So excited for that one. You know, out of all of the Optimus Prime designs from the live action movies, that is definitely the one which is in a dire need of an update. And then the final leader for Wave 2 is a Transformers 3 reissue of Shockwave. So a figure which has become very elusive. This will definitely be a great second opportunity for collectors to pick this bad boy up. Now we jump into summer of 2025. So Wave 3 is scheduled to be released in July. There will be a deluxe class Transformers 1 Starscream. Really excited to see how they pull off these brand new animated designs. There will then be a Deluxe Class 86 movie Bone Crusher. So finally, proper confirmation that Devastator is making his long-awaited return into the main line. There will then be a Deluxe Class reissue of the 86 movie Jazz. Honestly, I'm not sure why, because we've seen that Jazz mold reissued so many times, you know, most recently in the five pack. So I definitely think this slot could have gone to a different character. There will then be a Voyager Class War for Cybertron Thundercracker. So again, a repaint of Starscream, a Voyager Class 86 movie Scrapper. So a pretty big component to Devastator. And then finally, probably one of the biggest drops for next year, Leader Class 86 movie Megatron. How are they going to approach this guy? What are they going to give him as an alt mode? I would love it if he could transform into his original blaster, although I don't think that's likely. So expect a tank or something kind of strange, you know, a Cybertronian alt form, much like we did see from the most recent concept art Bumblebee movie Megatron. And then to kind of round off the year with the October 2025 Wave 4, there will be Deluxe Class War for Cybertron Autobot Soul so finally some army builders being introduced into the line. The Lux Class 86 movie Scrapper, Voyager Class 86 movie Mixmaster. So again, two pretty big components to Devastator. And then finally a Leader Class 86 reissue of Grimlock. So considering that this year we are about to round off the Dinobots, it does make sense they would reissue Grimlock because he was the first. He was released way back in 2020. So for those collectors which are new to Transformers, this will be a wicked opportunity. And then finally, when it comes to Studio Series as a whole, we are once again seeing the return of this mysterious level 8 assortment. So this is scheduled to be released in July of 2025. There's also wave 1 planned for this year. So hopefully we should know what it is sooner rather than later. But packed inside this wave will be a deluxe Dev Optimus Prime, which is rumored to be Optimus Prime based on the Devastation video game. So that is going to be really interesting, especially how they approach the whole cell shaded vibe in the Studio Series line. And then finally, a deluxe Transformers 1 movie, B127. Next up, Hasbro recently dropped the reveal for their upcoming multi-pack, which I am almost just as late to the game as they were in getting around to talking about. So, these multi-packs we've been seeing now for the past three to four years, they usually include four figures, three deluxes and one Voyager, and this year will be no exception. So, this is titled as the Legacy United vs. Multi-Pack, and the first figure in this pack is Squeeze Play, who I think looks awesome. So, this is going to be a retool of Mindswipe, which we saw released quite a few years ago now, although a very extensive retool. When it comes around to robot mode, he's looking sick. He even includes the Browning gun, which I thought was such a great touch. There will also be a headmaster crammed inside this guy. And when it comes around to the beast mode, I believe he's a python. That head sculpt is looking straight up sick. This guy's looking pretty mental for a retool. And honestly, is one which I would have loved to have seen as part of the actual main line. The next deluxe in this four pack is a repaint of Tarantulas, this time more inspired by his prototype colors. The head sculpt looks awesome, although I'm not too keen on the color deco. And I'm going to go ahead and say it, guys. I really don't have much of an interest in this one. And the same can also be 
be said for the Voyager class, which is officially titled as a Cyberverse Universe Tarn, although when it comes to a repaint, this is so lazy, and I don't think it's even better in comparison to the official mainline release, and you know, if they were going to reissue Tarn, I really wish they would give him maybe an unmasked head sculpt, that would have been pretty awesome, but yeah, I can't say I'm too crazy about those colours, he will include the sword which we also saw with Bludgeon, so that's pretty neat, and for those who never picked up Tarn, then this is a good opportunity in getting this guy into the collection, but seriously, for those of us who already have this, I definitely think this is a downgrade in comparison to the original, and then we turn to the fourth and final figure in this multi-pack, which is definitely the star of the show for myself, this is a Transformers Prime Universe Deluxe Class Cliff Jumper, which is looking sick, you know, it's kind of crazy to say, but Cliff Jumper by far had the least amount of screen time in Transformers Prime, yet I think has easily received one of the best legacy updates to date, this guy's looking freaking fantastic, so he does use the Rescue Bots Universe Chase as a main mold, I think it's perfect, you know, he really does look pretty damn awesome, the head sculpt is brilliant, although much like Squeeze Play, I would have much rather had this guy been a regular mainline release, I really don't have any interest at all in the Tarantulas and the Tarn, so if I can track this guy down individually, then I think that's what I'm going to do, because I am not crazy about picking up that whole four pack. But now swooping into some of the final reveals that I want to discuss in this video, this is by far one of the biggest drops that we've so far seen for 2024. The long-awaited fifth member of the Dinobots, we have Leader Class Studio Series 86, Swoop. And I think this guy looks fantastic. I mean, to be honest, you knew already with the previous Dinobots that Hasbro were mostly going to knock it out of the park when it came around to this guy. And I think especially in robot mode, they have done just that. This guy's looking brilliant. I actually really love the definition that you can see when it comes to the head sculpt. Now, I was a little let down when I very first saw the reveal because much like many of you, I was expecting him to include all of the Dinobot swords, especially as Swoop is one of the smaller Dinobots. You know, Swoop has never really had a very intricate transformation. He's quite a simple design, so I was thinking to kind of fill out that leader price point, they would include all of the swords, especially as we recently saw that Comic Universe Grimlock get revealed, and he came with all of the swords for the Dinobots, so I was thinking that it was going to be a no-brainer, but unfortunately he only includes two. One of which is definitely his, and then the other one I think is Grimlock's, so that's cool I guess but come on you know we need sludge and we need snarls I guess that we're gonna have to go and pick up that comic universe grimlock to kind of completely weaponize the dinobots but when it does come to robot mode he is looking brilliant you know the back detail is looking sick he's literally super clean which is awesome you can also detach the missiles away from the wings if you would prefer for a slightly cleaner look so that's definitely pretty cool although the transformation appears to be really simplistic because as we now flip to the actual pterodactyl mode I'm wondering how this is gonna size up with some of those other dinobots you know at least from this image those wings don't look as big as I personally would like them to be, but the head sculpt of the pterodactyl mode is looking awesome. You know, super nicely detailed, really well painted, and the figure overall just appears to be a great send-off to what has to be some of the best mainline Dinobots that Hasbro have ever brought out. You know, when it comes to kind of a group, a collection, those are so freaking strong. Literally all of them are awesome in my opinion, so yeah, definitely cannot wait to get Swoop in hand. And now we jump into some pipeline reveals. So Hasbro never just left us dry. They did give us some teases as to what we can expect for the next wave of Transformers Legacy United. So at the moment, it seems as if though this is only going to consist of four characters because they never teased the leader class, which we already know is supposed to be an Armada Universe Galvatron. He was slapped on the back of the box for the Titan class tidal wave. So I'm not quite sure as to why he never showed up as one of these through the space bridge reveals. But the first figure which we can expect in the next wave is a Robots in Disguise Universe Sideburn. Now, the writing has been on the wall for this guy for a long time. Ever since we really saw that Cyberverse Shadow Striker, that mold was made for Sideburn. So, we more or less know exactly what to expect. You know, it's literally going to be a repaint with a brand new head sculpt. I am still looking forward to it, and it will be a great companion piece to stack up against the upcoming HasLab. The next deluxe class, unfortunately, they never showed an image of. So, they literally just gave us the name. This will be a Cybertron Universe Hotshot. Although, they did confirm that Takara Tomy solely designed this one, which I am hyped for because the Cybertron Starscream also was solely designed by Takara and that is definitely one of my favourite Legacy United figures to date and they also confirmed that it will be the car version of Hotshot so we more or less know how it's going to turn out but what accessories will this include of course it will have to come packing with the Cyber Planet key like we are seeing more and more from some of these Cybertron universe characters the next deluxe class again unfortunately never had an image attached to it instead it was just a name reveal although this is the Infernac universe nucleus now I can tell you guys not to expect much from this this is going to be a really 
Creed Saw of Magnus, this time fully decked out in kind of a white deco. They have slightly re-sculpted some of the external rock texture, and then in terms of weaponry, he comes with this kind of massive booster, which whilst is a really cool accessory, I do think it would have been pretty interesting had they given this guy a complete brand new mold, but more on that to come in the future. And then finally, when it comes around to the Voyager class pipeline reveal, they tease that we are going to be seeing a Vector Prime, although I thought it was really interesting how the image they used was not Vector Prime based on the Cybertron universe, but instead the Align continuity. So I guess this is kind of a tease as to what we can expect going in to the next main line in 2025. And I am really excited to see as to how they approach this design, because I do think it's a little more interesting in comparison to his Cybertron design. But those are pretty much all of the drops, all of the news that I wanted to talk about in today's video. I would love to get your guys' thoughts down below out of everything discussed today. What stands out to you the most? And what do you guys think of some of the official reveals, especially that long-awaited Studio Series 86 swoop? I want to thank you guys all so much for watching, and until my next video, transform and roll out!